Hello and welcome to the 13th video in this uh, file uh, systems video tutorial series. My name is David Thorne, I'm from Thorne Web Design. Now in the past couple of videos we've been talking about using fopen, fgetc and we also discussed then finding the end of file. Now as we know fgetc will return a, a single byte of data from that one file stream regardless of the fact whether it's a number, a letter, or a symbol, a backslash n and so on and it will give you that data and it's down to you to then um, work out what you want to do with that one data. Okay. Now um, we also talked about the end of file. Now as you can see here I've kind of um, made a little bit of a, a representation of what the data could look like which we're going to discuss in a second. Now with fgetS which is what we're going to discuss in this video tutorial that reads the data um, until it reaches two things or one of one or of two things either it keep reading until it, it receives a new line a backslash n or if it reaches the end of file okay now if you can imagine um, on disk is basically lots of blocks of data which hold one byte of information and a character is one byte of information okay so our file of fopen.txt as previously mentioned has 1, 2, 3, backslash n, 4, 5, 6, backslash n, 7, 8, 9. That's the data which has in it. And at the end of it somewhere, um, let's say for example there's this end of file thing as well to say hey that's the last, last place in this one file um, therefore this file has finished. And then somewhere on the disk is a reference um, to where this starts. Now, fgetc, for example, we know that using fgetc in the C mode or then the read mode, it opens the file and puts the file pointer at the beginning of the file and it doesn't um, rewrite any data there and so on. So, every single time we call fgetc, the file pointer is at the beginning of the file and once we call fgetc, it moves the file pointer on by one and returns that one um, character or that returns that byte of information. We call fgetc once again, it moves the file pointer forward once, returns data and so on and so on and so on until it reaches the end of file which would mean then fgetc returns false. Okay, Therefore that would then stop our while loop. Now if we were using find end of file therefore we know at one point some flag has been checked to true to say it's end of file therefore it would stop as well. Now fgetS that works in slightly different manner. This will say in the beginning uh, or we say with fopen put the file pointer back to the beginning uh, and so on and then every single time we say fgetS it will say um, keep reading the file stream until you then come across a backslash n then stop and return me all the data that you had before that. Okay, so that's essentially what's happening. So the first time we c would call fgetS, it would keep reading until it, it reaches a backslash n, place the file pointer after that backslash n, okay, and then return all of that data, including the backslash n. All right, so we're going to get back essentially four bytes of data, then it's going to happen again. It's going to go one, two, three, four, and move forward until it reaches a backslash n. Um, and then it returns the data, and then once again it's going to keep moving forward until it reaches a backslash n or end of file. Therefore, it's going to return this data. It doesn't return end of file, it will just return that data. Now, it doesn't have to be three characters. It could be, you know, 4,000 characters before it reaches at the end of um, a, a new line and so on. So that's kind of what what we're going to be doing in this. Okay. So um, let's start programming it, shall we? First of all, we're going to check that our fopen.txt does exist. Therefore, we'll use file if file exists. Now that we've done that, we need our handle, our file how file handle and we're going to use fopen. We know that the first argument to fopen is then the, f the file name and the path. The second argument is the mode. In this mode we're going to be using the R mode which is just open that file handle for reading only. 
Um, once we have done that, we're going to check that our file handle is all OK by using an if statement. As soon as we've done that, we're going to be good programmers, so we're going to close our file handle straight away. And once we have done that, then we want to start looping around the data. OK, so we're going to say if not the end of file and the feof function um, takes one argument of the file handle which we receive from fopen. So we're going to keep looping and this time we're going to say line of data so our variable is going to be line this time rather than char and we'll say f get s and the first argument we give it then is the file pointer okay and once we do that we're then going to echo out the line data all right no break tags nothing like that for the time being just going to echo out the line data this will keep going um, and it will keep going until it finds a new line and it will return everything um, basically that it finds and then it will put then the file pointer just after the new line so let's come to the browser and we've got our fs.php now um, in the fopen.txt you can see that it looks like this um, therefore there's no break tags but the browser is um, interpreting those backslash n's telling it to go to a new line therefore we know it says 123 backslash n 456 backslash n 789 backslash n okay so let's refresh our page and as you can see now we're getting 123 space 456 space 789 and nothing and you can see here I'm just kind of highlighting but not getting anything therefore we know there's nothing after that 9 okay but if we look at the source okay the source has interpreted interpreted it in a different manner because it's put the data to a new line and also you can see we've got this fourth line here which we knew that there was that that mystery magical byte at the end which was then this new line okay so you can see that w the data we've received back is all of the bytes all of the characters and the new line as well all right inclusive with inside that data which is handy for us um, to know now um, yeah that just means that if you're reading data from a file and you want to then check with inside of that file if there's a certain character and then you want to r write that data back to the file then you don't need to worry about putting um, the the backslash ends on the end or whatever it just gives you it line by line now essentially what we can do is we can say trim on this okay and that will trim any white space of the beginning and the end of the file now backslash n is classed as also white space therefore it will trim any white space of the beginning and the end of the file therefore if we run this code once again you'll now see that the spaces have gone and if we then come to page source once again you'll see now that we get that data now just because it looks like it's all on one line here is that's because we haven't um, let me just close this source down um, that's because we haven't put it to a new line so we could then um, extend this even further and then say break which would then mean that we're outputting it in a manner how we want it so now it's kind of HTML compliant but you see here that we've then got two break tags on the end um, okay so essentially uh, let's just say uh, okay we're not going to going to confuse my well we we want to make certain that um, that the data which we read uh, wasn't then uh, wasn't then empty if you were going to output this for example line by line so if we then I don't really want to put it there oh, we can say trim I'll sort it we'll put it there if we then trim the data there and say if not empty line echo line and then break tag there okay and so on all right so we're trimming the results we're removing any white space off the beginning of the end and then we're checking that it's not empty essentially there's got to be more than one character there that's not white space so let's come back to here and refresh this now come to our, our source once again now you can see that we get 123 break 456 break 789 break which is what we want because we knew that there was a possible new line at the end um, which we didn't want 
Um, so it's just making certain that you um, you know how to manipulate the data properly and you know how to read the data properly and when you do get the that's that's essentially what it is is understanding which data uh, has been returned from et get uh, f get s that's that's this video tutorial done um, the next one which we're doing is because I want to show you how to uh, read data in a different way oh no sorry there is more there is more um, forgot about this let's just dump all this okay so um, I'm not ending the video yet. <laughs> uh, as I said, the f get s can take a second argument. Now, this second argument is you explicitly telling it how many bytes of data it should read. Okay, so it's kind of forgetting about this um, this new line thing. It's you telling it how many bytes of data. Now, if it does reach the end of file, then obviously our um, our function here is then going to sort it out. So, what we say now here is we're going to say um, we're going to say buffer rather than line, all right? Because it w we're essentially not working with lines anymore. We're working with buffers, um, which in programming language is kind of a, a, a different thing. So we're going to say f get s this time. I'm going to say fp. Now the second argument is the amount of bytes minus one okay so don't forget that that it's the length of bytes that you want minus one that's how many it's going to read so we know that our file has one two three new line four five six new line seven eight nine new line therefore if we read three bytes first of all or we get we said four okay because it's the amount the length minus one so if we said four in it, it's going to read byte one, two, three, and return that. Okay. Then it's going to read one, two, three, and then return that. And then it's going to re read one, two, three, and so on. So if you have got these new lines in there, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really advise using um, the second parameter for just standard text. Um, you would only really start using um, getting amounts of of um, data from a file if he was going to then start transmitting it or doing uh, other things um, with the likes of uh, non or with the likes of binary data and so on so I wouldn't concern yourself too much but just remember if you do do um, if you do use the second argument it's the length minus one all right so please remember that so if we just want to read it byte by byte, we would have to put two in there, okay? Because it's the length minus one. Therefore, whatever our length is, it's going to interpret that as minus one. Now, if you understand, <coughs> excuse me, understand what's going to happen here, we're going to say if buffer is equal to minus um, backslash n echo break tag else echo buffer now have a guess what's going to happen so let's come back to our browser oh that's the source still and we refresh this and as you can see it's exactly the same all right so all i've done here is tell it to read one byte at a time okay essentially all we've done is we've used fget c uh, in this instead now if I then said three, that's going to read two bytes at a time. It's going to read those two bytes and those two bytes. I wouldn't be able to check anymore if it was a new line. You know, so use it how you want. I just want to explain it. But just remember that the second argument is the <coughs> the length minus one. Now, if you want to um, read this, you can see then on the fget s uh, manual that read reading ends when length the variable which you're given minus one bytes have been read okay so that's the important factor length minus one bytes has uh, have been read therefore whichever number you give in it it's going to be minus one okay um that's it thanks very much for watching my name is david thorne i hope you've <coughs>
hope you got something in this tutorial and hope my coughing didn't disturb you too much I'm sorry I've literally just at the end of getting rid of this cough now um, okay um, look forward to the next uh, video tutorial uh, where we're going to talk about f open and f read functions um, reading n bytes at a time okay which essentially is what we've been doing in this past little thing but we're going to use f uh, read instead okay thanks um, see you in the next video